ASAV, AnyConnect, trusted network detection with umbrella use cases, really focused around split DNS. So split DNS basically is the ability to provide back a specific IP to, for the requesting domain based on the requester's client IP address. And so we've got a couple scenarios. We can't use a virtual appliance because it abstracts the client IP on premise. So we've got to come up with another way of solving this. So assets with no roaming client on premise, this one's easy and we're not going to focus on that, right? That's always going to hit the internal DNS server and recurse to umbrella for security. The next one's asset with roaming client on an untrusted network. So off premise. This one again is easy as you've got the roaming client installed. It's going to encrypt the DNS queries and send up to umbrella, right? For security. We're going to show that one because it's easy. Uh, asset with roaming client on a trusted network on premise. Now this is where we need to use trusted network detection to in, in order for it to know um, that it's on a trusted network. Okay. The next one is asset roaming client again with trusted network with split tunneling. So again, and off premise. So this one here, we got to make sure that um, the DNS requests are actually going to the internal DNS server. They're actually getting resolved recursively for external uh, DNS resolution and providing security. And then data obviously is going through that split tunnel. So we're gonna walk through those bottom three scenarios. The first thing that we wanna do, or we should do, is in domain management, we wanna actually in include our internal domains. Now that's good practice to do that. Um, and again, it's just to let your uh, platforms know that internal domain should go to the internal DNS server. Now, in this case, we're forcing everything to the internal DNS server um, regardless. The next thing we want to do is go into roaming computers. So we want to disable DNS redirection while on umbrella protected network. That's one. Respect any connect trusted network detection. Disable roaming client while on full VPN and then automatically update any connect, right? Um, so the VPN module, etc. So once we get that in play, now we go into uh, any connect or sorry, um, ASDM and we go into split tunneling and I just showing you here, we've got some trusted networks. That's it. That's all I want to show you is I've got split tunneling set up. Okay. So I know that was quick. Now you could do full tunnel. Then you go into profile. You make sure that you got automatic VPN policy enabled, trusted networks, disconnect, untrusted connect. You can put in a domain. Uh, as well as DNS server. I'm just using DNS server in my case. And then if you have lots of DNS servers, as an example, um, you could come in and put trusted servers to check, right? Um, I only have the DNS server outlined here because the complexity of my lab environment. Um, I can't use the, 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 the DNS names, but you can use both or you can use one. So now we know we're connected at, at, from an outside perspective, like if we're at a coffee shop, for example, and we can see it's enabled, right? Everything looks good here. And what I'll do is I'll go to cisco.com um, just so we can check the logging. And what we want to see is identity as host, okay? And that's just to make sure that the flow is actually working. And we can see we're protected and encryption is on. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to VPN in. And if things work properly, we shouldn't be using the client. We should be using the network based umbrella instance. So we can still see roaming security umbrella is active. And what we see here is it's protected and then network. So it's letting us know the networks protecting us, not the client. And you can see DNS encryption is off. Just like before, let's quickly test to make sure that we're connected to Umbrella. We see the orange check mark and we'll go to Canada.ca again, just so we can reference that and make sure the identity is network. We'll disconnect from here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go into any connect. 
or sorry, we're actually going to go into uh, network connections. We're going to disable the outside network and then we'll enable the trusted network. Now everything works properly. Any connect should know it's on a trusted network. You can see those interfaces are up. And we can see it's trusted network. And look at this, disabled VPN trusted network. Encryption is off because we're not using the client. But we don't trust it, so let's test it. And it looks good, right? And we'll go to us.com. And again, we should be able to see in the logs that this is coming from a network connection, not the client. OK. So that looks good. Let's just jump over to activity log and very quickly look up cisco.com. And if everything's right, the identity should show as Windows host. And we see the identity as Windows host going to cisco.com. So that one it checks out as expected. All right, so the next thing to do is let's check Canada.com. Now, remember with Canada.com, it should show up as a network identity. Or, sorry, Canada.ca. And we can see at the, the top here, or the top two, Canada.ca is using identity, the lab, which is the network identity. Perfect right that's exactly what we want to see and then finally we're going to do us.com and us.com again we see the network identity so that 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 all um worked as expected right pretty cool stuff very easy to get built a uh you know a little bit complexity with split dns but again if you look at it and you work through those workflows you can actually get the same outcome and get that much needed DNS layer security, which is your first line of defense.